Hey guys, uh, Mr. B here again, bringing you another math video. This one, uh, another calculus video on related rates. And this is one that seems to cause students a lot of trouble, uh, related rates in general. And um, it's no different than any to uh, topic in calculus. You really have to practice it and really seek out some examples. So what I've got here is an example that involves uh, trig derivatives, um, which again throws another element when you have to deal with some trig stuff. So um, again, this stuff is not easy, so you need to make sure you practice it. So let me just read the question, then I'll, uh, I'll draw a little diagram and we'll try it. So a man stands 12 meters away from a flagpole. He holds onto a rope attached to the flag. As the flag is raised at a rate of 10 meters per minute, so that's an important thing, the rope runs tautly, I guess that means, you know, sort of tight, through the man's hand, so that it is always kept straight. Find the rate of change of the angle and the rope, between the rate of change of the angle between the rope and the flagpole at the moment when there's 24 meters of rope between the flag and the man. So let's draw a little picture. So I'll break out a little triangle here. I'll just flip that around. You know, I like my triangles this way for some reason. All right, so um, here's our little guy standing over here. And here's the flag somewhere at the top here. And let's see what we have. So a man stands 12 meters away from a flagpole. So that number is constant. That's not changing. So he's always 12 meters away from the flagpole. So that's that's important to know. So he holds on to a long rope attached to the flag that is raised 10 meters per second. So I'm going to call this distance. So this flag is moving up here. So I'm going to call that Y just because it's in the up and down direction. So dy over dt. So all your all your things here with related rates questions are always with respect to time because we're talking about a rate of change. So how how something is changing over time. So that's all it is. It's like a speed, meters per second. So it's your distance changing per time. That's all it is. So this in this case it's actually distance. So you know we have meters per minute. So 10 uh, meters per minute. All right, so what else do we have? We're looking for the rate of change of the angle between the rope and the flagpole. So that's the angle up here. So we'll call that theta. So it's d theta over dt. And put a question mark on that. And it says, find the rate of change between the angle at the moment there's 24 meters of rope between the flag and the man. So this guy up here is 24 meters. So note that this distance is changing, but this, this triangle is made for one exact moment when it's exactly 24 meters. So that even though I have this 12 meters that's fixed, that's not changing, this 24 meters is changing, but this is like at the moment when it's 24 meters. So that's important to know because... Um, there's a difference between the two, but anyway, so um, we have dy over dt, 10 meters, and we're given um, it, uh, that at 24 meters, and we're looking for the rate of change in the angle. So we need a formula for this right triangle that takes into account um, what we have. So basically, we have this 12 meters that we can use, and we have this y that's known dy over dt, and this theta. We want to avoid using this 24 because, like I said before, we want to use the number that's fixed because at this time, 24 is not fixed. It's just that as 24 for that brief second or minute or whatever it is. Um, so we want to use the number that stays the same all the time because then. Um, we can we can easily take the derivative of what we have. So if I look here, from my angle, I have opposite over adjacent. So that leads us to to do tan. So tan theta. If you have a right triangle, you should immediately be thinking about sine cos tan and Pythagorean theorem. That's really what I tell my students: right triangle, sine cos tan, Pythagorean theorem. So opposite over adjacent. So 12 meters over. Y. 
So again, the reason I'm not using this is because this is changing. It's only 24 for a brief moment. All right, so now we need to take the derivative. So this is where um, we have to use uh, implicit differentiation. So I'm going to take the derivative of both sides, so d over with respect to time. So that's important to know anyway. So tan theta. So you need to know your derivative of tan d over dt, 12 over y, just like that. So now by derivative of tan, we just know it to be secant squared theta. Uh, the other thing you have to remember is that this is an implicit derivative. So since we don't have time in this, this is basically using the chain rule. So I just tell my students to know if you're taking the derivative with respect to one of these guys, a trig function with respect to time, you need to know that you put on the d theta over dt afterwards. So it is like the chain rule. So the chain rule for tan is uh, d over d. I'll just back up here one second. So d over dx or d over dt or whatever it is, tan of u is equal to secant squared u times u prime. So u in our case is theta. So, um, you know, I got my secant squared theta times u prime, which is theta prime or theta d theta dt. So that's all you need to know really about that. All right, so now let's get this guy taken care of. So 12 over y, I'm going to think of it as 12 to the negative 1. Uh, y to the negative 1. So that makes it a lot easier to take the derivative of because 12 is just a constant. So I'm going to take the use the power rule, so I'm going to subtract off 1, so I get negative 12. So that guy, that exponent comes out in front and multiplies to 12 to make it negative, and then I subtract off 1. So I, when I do that, I get negative 2. And then I have to make sure, again, this is with respect to time. So I have to make sure I tack on my uh, dy over dt. So again, it's like using the chain rule, that's all. All right, so now um, I have an equation with what I want to find, d theta over dt. And I have all these things um, with the exception of y. Um, which we can find using Pythagorean Theorem in a second. But I'm just going to rearrange this guy a little bit. Um, so I'm looking for d theta over dt. So um, let me just take care of this negative exponent first. So secant squared theta d theta over dt is equal to negative 12 over y squared times dy over dt. And now I'm going to just divide both sides by secant squared theta. So really what I'll just do is I'll just put 1 over secant squared theta. So instead of just dividing this guy, I'll just put it in the other side times negative 12 over y squared times dy over dt. A little bit messy, um, but you guys get the point. I'll fix this up. All right, so now the objective, what we need to find and be able to evaluate this guy, we already get dy over dt. We know that value from the question. We don't have y squared, and we do not have secant squared. So let's find those things. So let's start off with y squared. That's probably the easiest one to do. So y is this guy in the triangle. So y squared is equal to you know, the hypotenuse, this guy, 24 squared, minus 12 squared. So I like to leave mine just simply y squared because that's what's in our formula. There's no need to find y and then square it again. So I'm just going to find y squared, and I'll just tack that right into the formula. So 24 squared minus 12 squared is 432. So I'm going to throw that right in the formula, 432. Sorry about that. 432. And now I need to find secant squared. So there's a tendency, my students have a tendency to want to do this, is find the angle here. There's no need to do that. Let's actually find secant squared as a ratio. So secant 1 over secant squared is actually cos squared. So really all we're looking for is what cos squared is. So actually I can rewrite this 
now as cos squared theta times negative 12 over y squared dy over dt. And if I wanted to make it a little bit neater, I could put the negative 12 out front, all that stuff, but I'm just going to leave it like that for now. So cos squared theta, so cos is opposite, no, sorry, adjacent over hypotenuse. So we end up with so cos squared theta. So if cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, then cos squared theta is adjacent squared, so y squared over 24 squared. And there that y squared helps us out again. It's another reason why I don't do it. So 432 and 24 squared is 576. And when I actually reduce that down, that guy works out to be 3 over 4, which is a nice thing. So now we got everything we need. All I need to do is plug everything in. So my dy over dt is 10. So my d theta over dt. So I got 3 over 4 times negative 12 over 432. For some reason, I cannot write negative 12. Here we go. Negative 12. And then this guy's 10. So we just got to do the math on this. Now, if you're in a non-calculator situation, you'd have to really get creative with this question. Um, but I'm not, so I can sort of cheat a little bit. So I end up with negative 5 over 24. And I'm going to call this radians. Per minute. And there's my answer. So the rate of change of that angle is changing negative 5 over 24 radians per minute. So that's my answer. So if on a test, I would write a concluding statement saying, you know, exactly what I just said a minute ago the rate of change of the angle between the rope and the flag is you know, increasing, decreasing, it's decreasing at a rate of so-and-so radians per minute. All right, guys, so I hope this question helps. I really would suggest trying this question now on your own and seeing if you can replicate it because there's a lot of little things for these questions. Um, good luck in your studying, and I'll see you guys in class. Thank you for watching.